And there's another advantage to working with an actual population. If you go to our third tab, the library, what we're going to see is our ecosystem instances. We have the maples, and then that conifer. What we can do is select any of the ecosystem instances. So if it's a plant, object, rock, doesn't matter. You can go ahead and select that. And we have Edit Selected Master Objects or the Master Object Edition Mode. If we edit the selected master object, it's going to open up the plant editor. And this way, we can make modifications to the trees uh, directly within the same scene without having to uh, load in uh, that object, make modifications, save a new species. Uh, whenever you make a modification to, in this case, a tree, it is automatically going to update the distribution and the population of the entire ecosystem uh, where any layer or ecosystem containing that tree. And I'm just going to exit out of that. Uh, what we can also see is it's created a maple uh, too. So it's taken the object, or the plant we had selected, and created a proxy object for the manipulation. So we could set this master object edition mode and now that is gone from the scene. If we turn that on again it'll bring that back and won't edit it but now that object is in the scene so we can edit it at any time and then if you want to put it back uh, we're not going to be working on it you don't want it in the scene select it click on that again and now it's gone. So that's a way you can make modifications to your trees and any ecosystem object that can be edited. Uh, so you can do it directly within the same scene. With dynamic population, uh, that's currently something that isn't available. So unless you've created an actual population, you're not able to modify the objects and nothing will even show up uh, within the library tab. Another advantage to that is you can go to the links and now we can edit the texture maps of all of the objects in the scene. So because we have the actual population showing up uh, we could go in and modify the color maps and the materials of our ecosystem objects and just some of these options are not available uh, when you're working with dynamic population so these are ways to really improve uh, your workflow while working with dynamic population or preparing for dynamic population because uh, in this case we have a scene that is so large we can't just create a straight population because it's going to be uh, hundreds of billions of polygons and uh, that's going to be a little bit too much to work with.